Uh, my real father, he was actually a comedian, stand-up comic. He was actually really good. He did all of his material. He actually, before he had um, be doing his own stand-up, he wrote material. And I actually had a check from Rodney Dangerfield where he bought two jokes from my dad in 1979. I'd seen him probably about six, seven times in my life. He died of a heroin overdose when I was at the age of 23. There was very few days within probably from the age of 14 to 25, 26 where I wasn't high. I was either smoking weed, drinking, on ecstasy, on coke, on heroin, on crack. It had gotten so bad to where I was involved in that rave scene and I would do seven, eight drugs in a night. And I would come home on a Sunday night and my urine looked like coffee from so much toxins and from so many drugs. And in times when I would overdose and I would go into the emergency room, the doctors would say, what do, you, do you have a death wish? Do you have a death wish? And I had such, from my childhood, from being abused verbally and physically and emotionally, I had a lot of self-hatred. I used to, I remember at times where I would hit myself, I would pull my hair, I would bang my head on the ground because I just, I did not like myself. The things that it said to me. In fact, when I was 17, my grandpa just got done chewing me out for the God knows how many time and I just lost it and took two bottles of pills. I spent some time in jail. It all came to a head. I went out to Arizona to change the scenery, but I got back on the drugs. In fact, I went to go stay with my aunt where my father had uh, actually flew in and, and, and died. I was staying with her. I hadn't seen her for so many years, and she felt bad because she didn't have any contact with me. In fact, she, when she knew I was coming out there, she was going to go on vacation, and the Lord woke her up in the night, and she said, and, and the, uh, she had said that the Lord said, you stay there, I'm bringing Dominic out there. I actually went in. My father had overdosed in her back bathroom. I was in the bathroom in front of that, and I had enough heroin in the needle to just end my life, and I just said, Dad, here I am, here I come. And uh, I went to... Uh, I went to go shoot it in my arms, and the Holy Spirit came over me, and I just began to weep, and I got rid of most of it in the toilet, and then uh, I went to my aunt and broke down to her and kind of told her what had been going on with my life, and I gave her the, the crack pipe and the needles and that, and uh, they helped me get into Teen Challenge. And in being into Teen Challenge, I really began to develop a close relationship with Jesus Christ, you know, really experience His love and His presence, and the importance of you know spending time with him and then here comes this God that says he loves me just as I am and that he would take someone like me and that he would change me and make me into his image and likeness to me that's that's everything and to be able to embrace that reality that God would take me in my sinful state and my sinful nature and do a work in my life and cause me to be his child cause me to be holy and blameless in his sight you know, by the working of His Spirit. I mean, that's that was everything, because that's really what we were created to be, our sons and daughters of the living God.